What's up guys and gals, it's Griever back here, bringing you guys the latest Behind the Bar Reviews for Seven Deadly Sins, Chapter 327. Now, this chapter, this goddamn chapter has so much, you know what, you know what, there's been a lot of controversy. The power scaling, the, the direction of the arc, the villains characters not acting like themselves there's been a lot of issues here but you know what this chapter will be hated by a lot of fans however this fan right here no 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 in fact i'm going to show you guys just how much i think this chapter is perfect it's fine. It's a 10 out of 10 chapter. I will show you right now. That's much better. I feel more empowered by the rigorousness of the sun, the absolute vitality of the sun. Yes, Lord Escanol. Yeah, no. <laughs> it's, it's honestly, guys, this chapter was so good that I just really wanted to showcase why I think it was good. I don't think I really got the hair right, but... Whatever. Um, and, of course, the mustache. The mustache, I mean, it looks okay, but it could be clearly, like, way better. Like, it could be bushier and stuff. But, clearly, I didn't know this kind of chapter was going to drop. I mean, I don't exactly have months and months to prepare and grow a really big, bushy mustache. So, either way, great chapter, great fight. Let's summarize it like that. Because the rest of this review is simply going to be that. It's going to be talking about the issues people are going to have with this chapter. More so than an actual review. You know what? Let's just do the review part first. Because we got stuff to talk about. So, okay. Chapter was great. Fisticuffs match between Demon King and The One. Don't have a problem. I liked it. It was great. Was it a little one-dimensional? Like, people say it was boring. I didn't think it was boring, because every hit mattered. If you think this is boring, I mean, then clearly Dragon Ball Z was not your thing, and that's, like, most manga nowadays. Superpowers, yeah, oh, they're fighting with swords. It's so much more epic. Yeah, clash, clash, clash. What's the difference? Fist. Boom, boom, boom. Same idea, guys. It's a fight. It's a fight where it's not magical power. So clearly... Anybody who thinks that, I mean, the, the, the Taizai aspect has always been magical powers and stuff. However, I would argue that this is still really good. Once again, the two things that the series still has for it is building hype and you have art. Those are the two things that are still a staple of the ongoing series of Taizai. So let's just, let's just roll with that, right? So... Beginning of the chapter, Escanor in the one form, looking all boom, 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 beefy as hell. And Demon King's like, ah, oh, yeah, saw that from Purgatory. Purgatory! I remember that place, back when Demon King was an actual threat and cool. Um, but yeah, he's like, yeah, so you you defeated uh, in one minute, you defeated Meliodas, and you defeated, uh, and some reason I went to Italian with this one, you defeated my two sons, you defeated... You know, uh, Zeldris, and you defeated uh, Meliodas and such. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, he did. And I'm still waiting for Eskinor to pull out a line like, yeah, well, I need to kind of collect the family set. Crack, you know. But he doesn't do that. Instead, he does something even more badass. He punches the Demon King in the goddamn face. Because this chapter, simply put, Deanne shows up and she's like, oh, let us help you. It's like, Deanne, get away. You had your moment to shine. You had some good artwork. You cringed the biggest chapter of Taizai last chapter. Get the hell out of here. This is real, real good characters. Time to shine. And she's like, let us help you. And he's like, you interfere? That won't be forgiven. No, no, no. 
And Escanor stands up and he goes, Time is now. Time has come. He's ready to go. Stands up to the Demon King. He's as tall as the goddamn Demon King in this first part. And he's like looking, staring down at them, being like, Let's do this. Let's do this, bitch. And they go fisticuffs. And every single hit is like, boom, panel wide. Panel page wide. Boom. 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 Every single hit is felt. The art of this fight is so good. I mean, I understand. I understand why some people will dislike the fact that uh, this is a series about magic more so than a series about fisticuffs. However, Escanor has really relied on his fists at the end of the day. And it's something like the Demon King was going to do some Batu Jitsu shit. Like he like put his sword back. It's like, then come human sort of idea. And Escanor's like, Demon King, power of the gods. Let's do this sort of idea, right? And it was, you know, like, I'm not upset by this. I don't know why other people are. If you're upset by this, how did you ever watch the Dragon Ball Z fight? That's all they do. Intergalactic level characters that can blow up planets and they fight with their hands. Like, to me, it's not a big deal. The Demon King has not shown us really any, especially in Zeldris' body, has not actually shown us any level of unique magical powers or abilities or anything of that scale. He's fought with his sword in his hands. Okay. And Escanor, outside of summoning a couple of cruel sons, what has he done? He fights with his hands. Or Rita, a sword. Like, well, a weapon. I know it's an axe, but Rita. Like, like I don't get it. People complaining about this. I mean, you must have been really bored by Bleach or Naruto or One Piece. You know, oh my God, Luffy's fighting with his fists. Every single fight. Goku, Vegeta, they fight with their fists every single fight, even though they have key blasts. No, fight with their fists. I mean, they incorporate it. But remember the ruler? That's the thing. Magical attacks. Maybe not so effective. And that being said, at the end of the day, to me, it's a 1v1. It's a 1v1. It needs to be respected. It's manly as hell. It's like the Fast and Furious series, Dwayne Johnson versus Vin Diesel. Like, there was, there was military-level gunsmen standing by with AK-47-level assault rifles. Standing there while Vin Diesel and Dwayne Johnson beat the shit out of each other. Dwayne Johnson could have went, Ch -ch -ch Desert Eagle, we're, we're bringing you in, Vin Diesel. Instead, they had an epic brawl. What is so wrong with an epic brawl? That's what we got. We literally have two things left keeping the series alive, and one's the hype. So if the fight was, I understand, people want to see some cruel sons and stuff like that, but these fisticuffs, I'm good with it. I liked Dragon Ball Z, watching them fight, so I like this. I'm good with it. I don't understand why people are upset. Or anybody, if you are, I know Grim Reaper didn't like it, so, and go check out his channel, his Discord, blah, 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 plug, plug, plug. But, to me, the chapter was fine. The fisticuffs thing was good. It made sense with the whole ruler thing, magical attacks are reflected, or whatever, absorbed, blah, blah, blah. And... It made sense just because it's like, all right, let's do this. Like, would you guys have been happy if you had Vin Diesel and Dwayne Johnson starring in the Fast and Furious movie and they not actually go blow to blow? Would you have been happy with that scene ending with, you know, um, Dwayne Johnson shows up, destroys the charger, pulls out a gun, be like, you're under arrest? End of, end of scene? Or did you guys enjoy the simple... Enjoyment, the testosterone-filled fight of a brawl. I'm pretty sure I enjoyed it. It doesn't need to have, like, stop looking so deep. Is it one-dimensional? Of course it is. Who cares? Doesn't need to be tactful. Not every single fight needs to be Kisuke Urahara versus Sosuke Aizen. It doesn't. 
you can have a fight that's just pow for pow. I'm good with it, guys. What about you? Now, the rest of the chapter does go on to show a little more than fisticuffs. Well, no, it doesn't. It really, it really doesn't. This is a fight chapter, and I'm so happy about it. It was epic. It was awesome. It came out super early. That's why this review is late, because, I mean, if you guys can tell, I kind of was tearing apart the basement a little bit. I mean, well, you guys can't see the hole that's back there, but, yeah, I'm, I'm tearing apart a lot of the basement. Anyways, um... So, the Demon King, Demon King, been like, huh, savor my power well, human. Boom, boom, boom. He was like, how does the power of the Demon King feel? Escanor, Escanor, not but an itch. Boom! Slams him back in the face and just, like, stares down at him like, you. He might as well be Boa Hancock looking down at him so goddamn high he's looking behind himself going... You disappoint me. I thought your blows, your blows, I, I, I couldn't even feel it. Like, seriously, did a mosquito bite me in my face or something? Because your blows mean shit, Demon King. And I'm like, okay. Okay, Escanor. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm with you, buddy. I believe you. I'm, I'm there. I'm, I'm, I'm right here. I'm sitting here. I'm ready for this fight. Because... It's going down. Shit's going down and so goddamn good. Escanor delivering those goddamn excellent one-liners. So hype, happy, goddamn it, guys. I, You know what? I really wish I, you know, had something else to break. I've basically ripped off every wall I need to, but I'd love to, like, just showcase how, boom, just punch in some drywall. Just to show you guys how hype this made me. It was so goddamn good. Um, and no, I don't have anger management issues. I literally am renovating the basement. So, either way, this is what happens, right? And then they're like, okay, like, they're going toe-to-toe. -to -toe. It's great. And Deanne and uh, Gother and Bon and uh, Merlin, everybody's kind of talking about this. It's very short, but they basically are of the opinion. It's like, the problem is time because the one minute is going to pass. And then we see... You know, the the flames kind of go out off of Escanor's shoulders, like, and start to go on. And the Demon King's like, I commend you, human. You have given me more of a fight. Like, goddamn, that was, that was pretty good. But, however, one minute has passed. And he goes to punch. He's like, boom. And we're like, ah, oh, damn. Meliodas is standing back. And then we see, I believe this is Escanor. I believe this is Escanor thinking this. And he says, dear friend, to Meliodas, clearly, dear friend, you know, finally I can fulfill that oath from so long ago. Or, I mean, that's not exactly verbatim, but it's something about an oath that he told Meliodas. And he said, dear friend, sort of the idea. And then we see the reaction where the one minute has passed, Escanor's out of the one. Not exactly, no, we got some... Uh, Super Saiyan 2 happening. Escanor was Super Saiyan. Now we're getting some Gohan level against Cell sort of idea happening right now. Where, boom, the 1 2.0? The 1 2? You know, like, you know, give him the old 1 2, literally, because it's the 1, now it's 2, whatever. Um, this is, I mean, This, I, I don't even know what to say. The flame on thing. It's Super Saiyan 2. Escanor did a Gohan. He went Super Saiyan 2. It's so goddamn good. Like, this is what I'm talking about. Every other character in the series got one upgrade, if not more. I mean... Merlin was kind of always hacked, so that doesn't really count. You could argue Escanor, but it's about time Escanor actually got a level up. Bond's got multiple. Deanne, King, Gother, Meliodas. They all got multiple power-ups. Even Elizabeth and other characters, Gil Thunder and all them. They all got power-ups throughout the series. Escanor's just been a staple this whole time. And now we're finally seeing what happens when that one minute passes. We knew what initially is supposed to happen is that then it, he goes out of the one and he starts decreasing in power. 
clearly he pushed it, and, and the one went out. But then Escanor went, flame on! And boom, and went back into an even greater form than the one before. So, what I'm considering is what I've said before. I said it in multiple reviews. He is using his life force. Escanor is using every little bit. Remember, Rita was a weapon that absorbed sunshine constantly for him. So he didn't have to because it was too much of a strain on the human body. That is a little bit theory, mostly confirmed. Rita's gone. So he's basically using 100% of sunshine, which is why I argue that it can go against the Demon King. And we saw him using the one abilities outside of the one form previously against the Demon King. And now he's attacking and he went into the one. And I'm of the firm belief that now he's using the entire capacity of Sunshine. He's like, no, I need more than a minute. And he's sacrificing, he's using his life force similar to Ten Shinhan or Tien from Dragon Ball Z, you know. All these squares make a circle, triangles make a square sort of idea. You know, tri-beam ha or kiko ha um, against, uh, it wasn't, I, I said it last video, I said imperfect cell, but it's semi-perfect cell, whatever. I, I, I knew which cell I meant, but I said the wrong terminology. My bad. Either way, that's what he's doing. And I, I think he is. I think at this point, Escanor is utilizing he's sacrificing his life force to maintain the one but also upgrade it like i'm going to use every ounce of this grace that's left and i'm going to power up to maximum similar to a hunter x hunter thing with the gone thing you know going into adult form similar idea i guess um i don't know guys i think i think it's one of those things it's kind of like uh full metal alchemist philosopher stone sort of idea he's like okay i've only been using like little bits of it at a time but now i'm like crush the stone use the entire capacity available to me i think that's what escanor has done i think he's basically subconsciously he's melded his life force with sunshine he's like we are going to i'm gonna burn it out the eternal sun is going to go out he's going to use the entirety of the power of the sun to fight for as long as he can. And. I mean. Eskimo. What more can I say? I shaved my beard. I put on a mustache for him. And it's and it's not fake. That's why I put the video up. It's not fake. It's, a, it's a, the real deal. So. I mean. Eskinor. Eskinor man. He's, he's the best. He just is. I, I don't know why I love him so much. I don't know. I just think that this is so good, guys. But what did you guys think of the chapter? What did you guys think of the review? Did you love it? Did you hate it? Please like, subscribe, comment, as always. It's always very much appreciated. I kind of consider doing this as a live stream, but there's a lot more stuff going on. It's getting very late for me and my time. So I'm just, I wanted to make sure I got this review out tonight. And uh, so you guys could all see it. So big, this is a, to me, it's, it's, I just love the chapter. Maybe because I got too much of a hard on for Escanor. You guys can say that like, oh, Escanor fanboy. That's the reason you like it. Yeah, it's probably a good por portion of it. But I also think that this chapter didn't throw any more wrenches into the mix, which is something that's done every other goddamn chapter. The last chapter, Deanne being able to hit the Demon King of Rocks was stupid. So, even though the art was great, the the concept was dumb. So, and the end result. So, at least this result, I'm like, yeah, well, the one has been toted as the invincible incarnation of power. Last time I checked, invincible meant invincible, meaning power, meaning, like, can fight a god <laughs> like so i'm i'm liking this chapter i am what do you guys think of it as i said before trick responsibly as always has been griever with your behind the bar views for this latest chapter of taizai which i'm featuring Arthur right now but we all know that eskinor stole the show so 
We'll see you back here next time, guys. Uh, here we are getting an Escanor uh, Gaiden, similar to the Gother one that we got. I'll be looking super forward to that. And if we do get that, of course, I will review that as well. Um, because it's my favorite character. Him and Bond, my favorite two characters. Escanor is probably one step above Bond. It sort of fluctuates once in a while. But you guys all knew that I would give you this shit. If you came to my channel, you knew that I was going to talk the uppity up about Escanor. Because Lord Escanor.